Well, good morning, Grace United Methodist Church. Sorry, I am a little late this morning. It is 9.02. Uh, good morning. I'm glad to be with you. Uh, just uh, taking a breath and uh, attending to God's presence this morning and glad to be doing that with you. Welcome. We're glad that you are here. It is good to be together to spend time in prayer every morning and a good way to center and keep us focused. Thank you, Edie. Good morning. Um, again, we light a candle and the candle is a reminder of Christ's presence that we are here praying in the name of Jesus Christ. And when we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, God is listening. And in fact, Christ is interceding on our behalf as well. And so this lighted candle today is a symbol of that presence. It is also an opportunity for us just to stop and take a breath and realize uh, how much light there is all around us these days, even as we feel challenged. Good morning, Lynn and Diana and Judy. Good morning, all. Yes, glad we are here. Good morning, Wendy. Glad you're here this morning. So uh, if you've read in the comments section our theme, our theme for today is percolate. Yes, um, I have decided that's a theological theme. Uh, interesting because I use that word amongst our staff all the time. Um, that I think sometimes we rush headlong into things um, and it's always good to let things percolate so when you can you can glean the very essence out of uh, whatever it is you are trying to learn or discern. So today we're going to percolate together. I like that. Good morning, Carol. Glad that you're here. Um, Good morning, Marla and Michael and Judy. Yes, good morning uh, to uh, good morning, Jonathan and uh, Erica. Yes, we have the light and the flame of Christ uh, amongst us and hopefully in our hearts too. Good morning, Anne. Uh, glad that you are here this morning. As we um, think about this theme of percolating, I just uh, invite you to sit back. I'm gonna take you through a practice of contemplative prayer this morning. Um, so it will be a little different than our usual intercessory prayer. I still welcome you to list the folks that you would like prayer for in our comments. Um, but part of our prayer time will be uh, to just kind of move through a quiet meditation. So I hope that that will um, be good for you. We don't want to rush through this day. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. This present moment matters now. And yesterday is gone. And tomorrow we don't know what's going to happen in this valley this day today and so we want to be sure that we are um, attending to this day and not trying to to rush ahead and not trying to live in the past not to worry about what what comes next that today is what matters and what is in front of us is what matters so this morning um, as we think about this idea of percolating there, I'm going to say good morning to Becky and Dee and Rick and Terry. Um, glad that you're here. It's so good that we can connect with old friends. Good morning, Jenny. Uh, yes, we have lots of folks that are uh, friends from around the country, some even from around the world. We sometimes get uh, Virginia here from Germany, too. So uh, it's always good to see those connections continue uh, through prayer. So I want to share just a couple of quotes from some spiritual leaders um, who have offered an idea of what this theme of percolating might mean. It might help you understand a little bit. And these, uh, there's one that's contemporary, the others are ancient, uh, ancient uh, fathers of the church. Brother Lawrence says this, that, this idea of percolating, and I'm interpreting that, but 
um, his his comment is is that this this type of prayer is the pure loving gaze that finds God everywhere. The pure loving gaze that finds God everywhere. That's from Brother Lawrence. What Gregory of Nyssa said about this kind of prayer is it's a divine wakefulness and pure and naked intuition. Divine wakefulness and pure and naked intuition. This kind of prayer brings us into the presence of God. Thich Nhat Hanh, who is a contemporary, he's a Buddhist and also practices Christianity. And he says this, this life of prayer is looking deeply at life as it is in the here and in the now. Looking deeply at life as it is in the here and in the now. So again, percolating, it doesn't depend on whether things are easy or hard, whether we're happy or not. It is not something that we judge, um, but moving into a sense of God's presence, uh, I think it helps us with perseverance and endurance and faithfulness, especially in times like this. Uh, good morning, Sylvia and Milton and Barbara. Good morning, Katie. Oh, glad you just woke up. Glad you must have had a good night's sleep. Good morning, John, and good morning, uh, Rich. Glad to see you this morning. So with those concepts of um, prayer and the idea of percolating in God's presence, uh, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures for you. The first one is from 1 Kings 19, and this is a story of Elijah. He came to a broom brush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. You see, he was exhausted. He said, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. And he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. And all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some baked bread over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty, and the Israelites have rejected your covenant and torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword, and I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. And the Lord said, go out, stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Amen. From the book of Hebrews, this is from chapter 12. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight 
and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for that joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. So good morning. A uh, few more folks have joined us and good morning, Kristen and Hannah. Glad that you're here. So a lot went uh, out and just went, fell down and went to sleep. And you could say he was fatigued and tired and didn't know what to do next. And God kept providing for him until he was able to be strengthened for the journey to actually go and look for where he might find God. Some of us might be feeling like that right now, either bored or fatigued, um, tired of dealing with all the challenges of staying at home. And maybe we need that space to rest, let our minds be at peace and let God provide what is needed for us. That's why it's so important for us to stay present in this moment. So Elijah then goes to a cave. I love that he goes into a cave, a very quiet place, a place that's been set apart. Uh, we all have uh, a place that is deep within ourselves and within our own spirits, even if we can't be in a place that is set apart from others right now. We can go into the cave of our hearts and listen deeply for God in that place. It kind of reminds me of um, the story of Jonah and the whale and that God used the whale kind of as God's coffee pot, right? God was percolating Jonah in that whale. Um, Percolating is not giving up. It doesn't mean that we haven't, uh, that we've stopped. It just means that we're willing to let um, the essence of what it is we need to be learning from God to, to come up and be uh, distilled. We're all headed somewhere. We're not standing still, even though it seems like it. We maybe have been at home for a long time, but we are going somewhere. Remember God's instructions to the Israelites for the Passover. Um, that he was going to deliver them, but they were at home and they were in uh, in their places of safety with the, the blood over the lentil of their doorways, eating a Passover dinner with their sandals on and their staff in their hand, ready to go when God provided the timing for them to leave. And so this sense of, of all that God was offering them in the midst of that Passover, uh, was was the beginning of what would deliver them. And so perhaps there's a new deliverance coming for us as the church. Uh, perhaps each of us personally may be delivered into something new through this time of um, being so set apart from community. Uh, of course, I'm not trying to romanticize or glorify the idea of this pandemic because this pandemic is serious and it's difficult and it's hard and it's tragic and we continue uh, to lose people uh, to this coronavirus every day and it's just awful. It's um, And so again, uh, we need to keep in mind uh, all that is happening out there in the world and let that be the thing that strengthens us to continue to persevere um, and to stay at home. Please remember that our God is a God of history and God has been faithful at, remember, uh, through creation, covenant, uh, through the birth of Christ, through the, the cross and the cru crucifixion and the resurrection, and we are waiting for Christ to come again. So God is a God of history. And at this moment in history, we, like every other generation, are given an opportunity to show ourselves faithful and to persevere in this waiting because we know that Christ is coming again. So it's Easter, and let's remember to keep looking for the risen Christ uh, in all the places that we are right now, in places of healing, 
in places of hunger, in places of boredom, and in places of fatigue. We need to keep our, our spiritual antenna up. We need, we need to constantly be, 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 be sensing God's presence amongst us. Every so often, God is going to whisper and we want to be ready to receive how God is capturing our attention. So as I mentioned the morning, good Steph, good to see you here, Nora. Good morning, uh, Denise and Kana. Thank you, Edie. We are praying for Nancy Miller on hospice. Uh, all those who are on hospice today, Uncle Clem and Helen as well. Good morning, Benny. Good morning, Sharon. Um, yeah, and, and it's kind of interesting that I'm using this opportunity to uh, think about percolating and contemplative prayer because even though we can't be with those loved ones, with uh, Nancy and Helen and Uncle Clem, we can be with them in, in spirit and pray God's spirit and love surround them at their bedsides. Um, this is a, a difficult time, but again, please stay faithful in prayer. I'm going to go back to that concept of percolating and letting God's um, presence kind of form us and shape us and, and bring the essence of what God needs from us out. And I do that through contemplative prayer. When you think about artists and creativity, you know, they need to take some time apart from their work to let their work emerge and evolve. And I think it's the same for us for our faithfulness. We need to take some time to let how we're understanding God's faithfulness and God's love and God's love, mercy reaching into our lives. And we need to kind of let that percolate in order for, for the light to emerge out of, of our lives. So I hope that image helps a little bit. So this morning, let's begin. I'm going to ring a singing bowl. It will be our bell. This morning, I'm going to invite you to a silent alleluia because no one needs to hear that alleluia except for God. Take a moment to breathe. Breathe in. Hold that breath for a few moments. And then let it go. Take another breath. and let it go. I want you to take a moment to adjust how you're sitting. And I want you to sit in a posture as though you knew Jesus was sitting right beside you. Pay attention to your body Remember, we are a body and a soul, so begin to listen to your body this morning. Identify where you're feeling tension. Maybe some arthritis or discomfort. Take a moment to notice your hunger or your fullness.
notice any kind of energy or pulsating running through your body, through your hands, to your fingertips, through your feet, to your toes. Let your breathing become a little bit deeper. If your mind begins to wander, you can return to that idea of your breath. Imagine yourself like Elijah in a cave waiting for God to pass by. If you begin to notice a place of clearing, try to go just a little bit beyond that into further spaciousness. Return to your breath. Check in with your body. Don't judge where you're feeling tension or discomfort. Just check in and know that it's there. And now again, see if you can come to a place of clarity or clearing. And try to go just a little bit further than you have been before. that you might find some spaciousness, a fuller sense of the mystery of God's presence. Maybe in the form of peace or mercy or assurance. Return to your breathing. And when you're ready, I invite you to return your attention to this day. Open your eyes and look around and notice what you're really surrounded by. See if you can notice something new that you hadn't noticed before. Amen. Well, thank you for uh, moving through that space of prayer with me. That is a, a place that we can return to several times a day. And again, let that be a long and loving look. Uh, let that be a, a place of percolation where God continues to reveal God's self to you. So we've mentioned a couple of folks that we are praying with and for today. Um, we want to remember those again who are out on the front lines 
still so thankful for the people in our community that are working in the food supply chain. Thankful for all the first responders who are helping. It was uh, first responders that picked Nancy up and took her to the hospital. And we remember that. We remember the goodness of neighbors and the care of people around us who are uh, helping us to endure as well. And we remember all of our healthcare workers uh, that are on the front lines every day and their families uh, offering all that they can to help relieve the suffering of people with this virus. There are several folks as well that are dealing with medical treatments and needing to be in and out of the hospital and in and out of doctor's offices and uh, folks that need to uh, get rides back and forth to places. And so as we think of those folks, we want to remember what they are dealing with as well in prayer. And we remember today, Frank and Gary. Uh, we remember Tammy Whiteman's mom, Sandy. And uh, we remember Erlene, who is in the hospital and her family, Dee Dee. Uh, we ask God's blessing on all those who are dealing with uh, challenges outside the home that they, uh, that are creating quite distance between family members. So good to um, be able to pray about that with you this morning. We will close with the Lord's Prayer. And I do have a couple of uh, opportunities for you to listen to some music this morning. And the first one is a Taze chant which again from the community of Teze is a place that invites and teaches contemplative prayer. And so you might uh, practice some contemplative prayer as you use that chant. It's just a, a repetition uh, of a few verses. I don't believe they are written on the screen, but I think you will catch on to them as they are sung. And then a beautiful version of This Is My Father's World. And again, just uh, to remember that there is so much to be alert and aware for. And so let's walk through this day with a, a, a renewed wakefulness for all that, that God is providing and, and the ways that the risen Christ is appearing to us. So let us, let us join together in prayer for others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for the newness of this day, that this day brings within it new mercies, uh, new sense of your presence, new hope, uh, new blessings. And so we lift our self up to you and we offer you a long and loving gaze as we know that you are looking at us with love. We pray this day for those that we are most concerned about, those who are deeply on our hearts. And especially this day, we lift up to you, Nancy and her family. We ask for your comfort to be with them, to provide all that is needed through these hours. May this be a time of comfort and of peace and a, a, of a real uh, sense of the, the strength of your love. Uh, we thank you for the community of uh, grace who is surrounding her in prayer at this time. We lift up Uncle Clem and we lift up Helen and ask your continued blessings upon them as they endure these days and for their families. May there be the, the same strength of your faithfulness and your presence at their bedsides. We pray this day for all our first responders, our healthcare workers, our food supply chain workers, all those who are helping to maintain our lives and the, the lives of those around our world who are dealing with this pandemic. We thank you that you have given us a work to do by staying at home. 
and we ask that you continue to encourage us to remain faithful just as those who are taking care of our communities are, are remaining faithful in the work that you've given them to do. We pray this day for our children. If we can do anything to provide for their peace and their well-being through this time, just pour that out upon us, God, so that we can lead and guide them through this time of pandemic, this time of uncertainty and unknown. Keep us faithful in prayer for all those who are ill. Um, again, we pray for those in our community, the names that we've spoken, and we lift up names now that have not been spoken. Thank you most for Jesus Christ, O oh God, um, for the opportunity to grow in his grace and in his love, to grow in ways further of understanding mercy. Um, keep us strong in prayer as we intercede for others and in the kind of prayer that draws us ever closer to you. And so may, may we all go forth this day um, percolating, becoming more awake and aware of your presence. We pray this day as Jesus taught, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So go out into this day and uh, live in this present moment. This is the day that we have been given. Uh, and we are to live fully in the present and in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you all.